Radical Sports Cars is an interesting, it's an interesting company. Um, out of uh, England, Peterborough in, uh, in um, Great Britain. And the company started in the 90s and uh, basically it was a father and son team and they took together a, um, the thought that they wanted to go racing and, um, but also build a car that had a couple of different purposes. And what they have uh, given the racing world is a technologically advanced car that is also easy to learn on. It's a steel tube chassis, and, um, but it's built on the platform uh, using a Hayabusa motorcycle engine. So what that does is gives you a lightweight, uh, high horsepower um, engine and uh, also gives you something that can be very easy to learn and to uh, develop as a driver. Um, with the Radical, it is a prototype style looking car, but it gives you the visceral experience of the open cockpit and um, it just it gives you an experience like no other. So it's, it's like your typical racing um, weekends where you'd have you know, practice uh, on, a, on a Friday or a Thursday. Um, you, you load in with the team, you come in, you set up. That usually takes a day. Then you have practice on Friday, practice qualifying, and a race on sun Saturday. And then you have a, two races um, on Sunday. And then the last race is usually a one hour enduro where you have a, uh, a pit stop in the middle of the race, uh, basically to, to change up the field and, and make it a little bit more interesting for people. So every one of our race weekends follows that same type of, uh, same type of uh, program. Uh, first off, the background of Jordan. Jordan is a member at, at Autobahn Country Club, a member at Team Stradale, and also uh, worked at Team Stradale and works at Team Stradale. He does um, uh, our VIP valet, our coaching. Um, you know, a lot of our other drivers have gotten to know Jordan a lot, and, um, and so he's become an integral part of the team. So what I really respect about uh, a person like Jordan is he, he hasn't, um, you know, taking it, you know, getting it to his head that he's a, a driver and only a driver. He, um, you know, wanted to develop and learn everything about motorsport. So he has become, you know, he's gotten into every role and become a part of that uh, team. Um, now he wanted to compete in the full series, so he wanted to uh, give it a really good shot and, uh, and see what he can do. Our hopes have always been really high because Jordan's a very good driver, um, but also he, he's the full package. Uh, he understands motorsport as a business and understands that there's more to it than just driving. There's the marketing piece, there's the team effort, um, there's the understanding of the business piece, like, like how we can go to all of these races on a budget, keeping within a budget. Um, and, and sometimes that's out of the control of the drivers, but he's been good at, um, you know, being in on those meetings with his parents and the team and myself and understanding, you know, why certain tracks we're not going to be able to go practice at. So you're going to have to do a lot more sim time on and you're going to have to put in the effort that way. Good morning from sunny Alabama. We're at the second round of the Radical Cup series here at Barber and um, all the drivers and teams are getting ready for day two, it's Saturday here, and um, this is qualifying and race day. Barber is a great track for us. It's got a really familiar feeling because the same person who designed Autobahn, which we race at all the time every day, uh, also designed Barber. So Barber is like Autobahn with elevation. So we're just doing a couple of fine tuning, last minute adjustments before qualifying. <laughs> Barber had its ups and downs, started uh, pretty hot, weather was very hot. Um, we're running good, race one. Um, unfortunately, Jordan spun out, got into it in, uh, with an SR8 on track and dropped him back a little bit, but he stuck through it. <laughs>
race three uh, is kind of where everything went crazy. got back going to where he did, came into the pits and we checked the car out due to the mandatory pit stop and we had to pull some, pull a bunch of fiberglass parts that were hanging off the car. Jordan ended up crashing out uh, with uh, another driver but ended up finishing the race sixth place unbelievably with a broken chassis and uh, still achieved amazing lap times toward the end of the race when he got back into the, into the mix of it and to be able to command control of a vehicle like that at the speeds that we were going uh, with that, um, that damage was, was very difficult and showed a lot of experience um, and good driving skill. Good morning, everybody, and welcome along uh, the third time of asking for the Blue Marble Ultra Premium Cocktails Radical Cup North America. John Hindoff and Shea Adam, and welcome along to the perfect uh, weekend starter. Just look at this weather. Just look at the run-up to Turn 1. It's absolutely gorgeous. And we've got a cracking grid for you here. Jordan Missick, what a burst onto the scene. We wait forward and look forward to see what he does for the last race of the weekend, the last race of the season for the Radical Cup of North America that takes place here at Circuit of the Americas, just outside of Austin, Texas. Can anyone beat Judd Miller? Well, so far the answer is no. This, this is everything that we wanted for the season and more. And we hope that uh, you know the last race here at Coda goes really well. And we have three more races, so lots of points to, to rack up. And we're just going to keep our heads down and focus and, and do our best. And here we have Jordan Missick, who's the first of the non-V8s. Jordan, you've got the four-cylinder disadvantage to the three cars around you. But the, these cars corner very well, a bit lighter than the V8. Can you give these guys a run for the money? Uh, we could try. Um, it's a little bit harder to do it on the straights, so we'll, we make our time up in the corners. Uh, we try to get around them in the corners as best we can, but sometimes they tend to get in our way, so we just got to deal with the best we can. All right, mate, we'll let you go. We're letting these cars get out of the way. Timed that absolutely perfectly as the cars roll out for their warm-up lap. It's a fabulous evening. The Radicals have been released and Shea Adam will take you through the grid. We knew we had to come out and win all three races. Um, we were way down in the points, so we knew we had to have a big showing no matter what. The Audi R8 is in the pit lane, and Judd Miller for SS Racing in the 2.7 V8 Stars and Stripes car. On the left-hand side of the track, it's a long hold. It's a long hold indeed. And the V8s don't necessarily get off the line quickly. We're using a start line that is way down. Now we break. One, two, three, four, five across the track. And Judd does get away.
position, going down to turn 12 and all the way at the inside. Antoine Cobble has had to defend because the slipstream was being used expertly by Jordan Missing. I was just about to say, where's Jordan gone? Because I couldn't see him behind the car of Antoine in second place. This is the battle for the 1500 category, remember, as they're in now into the shade. Different grip levels again as they come through turn number at 15 heading towards 16, 17 and 18 which is that triple pressure corner uh, the 48 Missig he is fighting now with the number Antoine. 10, yeah. Antoine Camus, oh, making oh, a huge lunge. Down into turn 12. He was offline there, and it's very slippery offline there, and even more bumpy. Lucar currently in fourth overall, but battling for second position in his class at the moment, and looking at the leader ahead of him. We come around through the stadium section for the final time of asking. The checkered the flag is out, the checkered flag is out, and that's what we run to, and it will be a win for the missing wins his class ahead of Antoine Como, the 48 from the 10. Mark Crater will be third in his class. Gustavo Raffles up into sixth position with a great restart from the yellow flag position. Jordan really shined and dominated the entire weekend because he learned the course very fast. But Jordan was able to, to learn the, the circuit and, um, and learn where his advantages could, uh, could be useful. And that was just evident in, in everybody telling me when they came back how Jordan just dominated the weekends. Just hone his craft and uh, things started coming together. Overall, it was a very, very good season. We started off with the new driver and had our troubles going on early on, and uh, we worked through them and worked together and got better every single race and uh, ended up winning five out of the last six races, so it was really big. Thoughts next year are even, even bigger. Uh, we want to win everything next year.